Hi there, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to see AWS SAM with REST APIs. So this is a sample project which I have created from AWS CLI using SAM Mini, and this is a Hello World program. So I have not changed anything in this code. And by default, this is the code which was generated by AWS CLI. So here we have a function. If I expand this away, this is a function under resource, and we can see uh, everything is pre-configured, and we have an event which is already attached to this Lambda function. So that means whenever we hit this particular API, this Lambda will be triggered. So let's not change anything and first deploy it. And to do so, first you have to do SAM build. After that, you have to do SAM deploy. So let's wait a while to complete this. So now let's deploy it. For that, we have to do SAM deploy. If you're doing it for the first time, you have to do guide it. And that's it. You can hit enter. But in my case, I'm using multiple AWS accounts. So I have to provide my profile here. And it will start. It will ask you a few questions, uh, such as the stack name, the reason. In my case, it's AD South One. Then make your choices here. And whatever choices you made here, it will create you a file here with your details. And this will be used in your next deployment. Now it will ask for your consent. I think, yes. So the process has started. If you go to AWS console, you can see this process running there. So let's quickly go there. And here you have to go to Cloud Formation. So you have to go inside here. I'm already there. And if you refresh this page, you can see you have a new stack name. And you can see this is in progress. Now if you go to resources, you can see what all operations are going on. Similarly, if you go to event, these are the status for this particular operations. So let's wait, wait a while to complete. It's still now, and let's say if you go to your stack and in your resources, you can see what all resources this deployment has created. You can see you have a Lambda function, then there is a permission, there is a role, there is one REST API, and there are a few uh, things which got created in API Gateway. In API Gateway. So let's first see our REST API. If you click on it, it will redirect you to API Gateway, and here you can see now you have a Hello API which has a Git call. And you can see this is a, a execution flow for this particular API. So whenever you hit a API from your client, it will go through this flow. In between, if you want to modify your header or if you want to manipulate your data, you can do from this stage. And finally, it will hit to your Lambda. And same in the response, if you want to do some changes, some mapping or some kind of transformation in your uh, response, you can do it in this stage. So now let's hit the URL by which we can hit this particular Lambda. So for that, if you go to stages, so by default, we are provided with this two stage. You can pick anyone for your testing. You copy the URL and you come to your postman. Now, if you hit it, it will go to your AWS and it executes your Lambda and returns back your response. Now, let's understand what is happening under the hood. So this template YAML file, this is a configuration file. You just have to configure what you want to do with your infrastructure. So here we have added the event, the API event with our Lambda. So whenever you hit this API, this will trigger this Lambda function. So this Lambda function is configured here. The code URI is our directory name. And inside of it, we'll have a app.js file. And inside of it, we'll have a Lambda function, which has been exposed. And if you come inside this app.js, you have a handler. And it is doing nothing. It's just returning back this hard-coded value. So let's see different APIs combination. So suppose uh, in your API, you want to make a get request but with some ID. You want to pass some path variables. So in that case, in AWS SAM, you can do something like this. You can provide uh, your, your path variable uh, in close with this curly braces. And you have to specify your method. Suppose you want to trigger this Lambda function with one more API. You just have to copy this and you have to come here, paste it here. Suppose you want to trigger this function for a post call as well. You have to do something like this. And let's modify this as well. And make sure your indentation is proper because it's a YAML file. This is how you define path variable in AWS SAM. So the changes are done. Let's deploy it. And before doing so, you have to do SAM build. So whenever you make any changes in your code, you have to make sure you do build, then deploy. Otherwise, your changes won't work. So whenever you do SAM build, it updates this particular folder. This particular folder is a build folder where all of our code been compiled and prepared. So build is completed. Now let's deploy it. And this time I'm not going to use guided because 
because it's already been deferred for the first time. So it is deployed. Now let's go to our AWS console. And if you go to Cloud Formation, and if you refresh it, uh, you will see the new resources which got created. Now I'll go to the gateway. And here now you can see you have an API slash hello with a path variable, and it supports get and post call both. And also from here, directly you can hit this API with some param value. And you can see now you're getting response from your Lambda. So you can directly test it from here or from your Postman. Now let's go to Lambda. And here we can directly edit our code as well. You can see whatever code we deployed, it has been visible here. Only thing is we won't be able to see template YAML file because that was made for cloud formation for the configuration. And other than that, uh, the Lambda code will be able to see here. So right now we are not doing anything. Uh, let's just log the event which we are getting. So by this, we'll be able to see our event. Let's deploy it from here directly. Now let's hit that API once again. And this time I'm going to pass some item value. And you can see we got the response. Now, if we go to cloud formation, the log for this particular lambda, you can go it from here. You can go to monitor and you can do view logs in CloudWatch, or you can directly go to CloudWatch service and you can search for this particular log group. So here we can see this is the latest log stream, go inside of it, and you can see your event is being printed here. So let's find our path parameter. So here you can see you have a attribute called that parameter and this is the ID which we are passing. So similarly, if you want to send query parameter, you can send it. And for that, you don't have to do any template change. Uh, suppose I'll say name equal to replace. And if I send it, we got a response from our Lambda. That means nothing error happened on our Lambda side. And if we just go back, and refresh it again and see the latest log. Here we can see uh, something in our query string parameter. Now we have a query string parameter as well as path parameter. So now you can utilize these two values, these two attributes inside your lambda. Anyway, and this all information is inside of our event function. So whenever you want to get this value, you just have to use dot operator. Suppose if you want to get this particular value, this ID value, you can uh, go to your Lambda. And now if you go to code, uh, we are logging off our event here. So instead of doing so, we can do dot path value ID and let's log some masses with it. Path parameter value and let's deploy it and let's see. So it has been deployed. Now let's kick it again. We got the response. Let's go to CloudWatch, go and step back, refresh it, go to the latest log stream. Here is our value, which we just printed from our Lambda. So this is how you can configure path param in your API. Also, this is how you can attach multiple API events with your Lambda. And also we saw how we can pass our query parameter to our Lambda. So that's it guys for this video. If you find this video useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.